Yeah. Okay, we're getting started. Good evening and uh, welcome to uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission uh, monthly meeting. Can we all stand? I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let me uh, start by introducing our commissioners. We have Bob Ladd representing the Hampton Beach Village District. We have Rick Griffin representing the town of Hampton. We have Fran McMahon representing the Rockingham Planning Commission. John Nyan representing the town of Hampton. Chuck Rage to my left, representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Dean Merrill, our commissioner at large. Mike Hausman, representing the new, newly named agency, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. We have Jason Bassan, who is with the Town Planning Department. And we have Bob Preston, representing the Hampton Beach, our Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, and let me start by thanking Jason for volunteering to take notes uh, for tonight. Uh, a quick update on the secretarial. Um, we have uh, posted it within the town. Jamie Sullivan is working with us to see if he can find a replacement for Ann. Um, and hopefully by our next meeting we will have a, a, a secretary taking uh, our minutes. So Jason, once again, thank you very much for taking the lead on this tonight. Um, we don't have anybody in the audience, so I suspect we don't have any public comment. We have no appointments. Uh, so let me get right to the uh, minutes of the meeting that was held on May 23rd. Page one. Okay. Page two. Good. Page three. Page four. Page five. And as you can see, uh, Ann Marchand left a very nice little note at the end of the minutes. Um, I recently uh, chatted with her and uh, she was doing uh, well, still trying to get settled between her uh, property here in Hampton and her new location down in uh, Massachusetts. I told her that once she did get settled, that the uh, commission would still uh, like to get together with her um, for an appreciation uh, uh, event. Treasures. Oh, so uh, with I'm, that, do I have a motion I to? Move the minutes as read. Motion has been made by Mr. Merrill, second by Mr. Rage. Any further discussion on the minutes? Hearing none. All in favor. Opposed. Thank you. Treasurer's report, Mike. Yeah. So no change uh, through the summer. The balance remains nine thousand six hundred twenty-eight dollars and forty-three cents. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion to accept the treasurer's report? Mm -hmm. Motion made by Mr. Griffin, second by Mr. McMahon. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed. Thank you. Our transportation grant. Um, I had a discussion with both Bill Watson and uh, William Rose recently just to kind of get a quick update. And um, the uh, transportation grant uh, vendor, VHB, has been working all summer in putting together um, uh, work on the transportation grant. And William will be attending the meeting at the end of this month. Uh, to talk about next steps and hopefully by the November meeting uh, there will be a presentation by VHB with regard to the update and the proposed public comment um, component of the grant. Uh, as you all know the grant uh, moves into next year uh, and will end no later than August of 2018 but a fair amount of work that will take place from November uh, throughout all of the early part of next year will be uh, additional public comment 
public comment, not only by private residents, but by uh, agencies uh, that have been involved, uh, all of our organizations that we represent. And it will then be uh, basically determined that, that will be the end of the grant with the findings that everybody will then uh, either approve, disapprove, or uh, put on hold. So that's where we're at with that. Um, I did talk to William, and he suggested that I uh, put together, uh, by the end of this month, a somewhat of an updated in-kind contribution just to make sure that we're uh, in line uh, with the grant uh, obligation of the 20% uh, the match. Um, there has been no real commission activity uh, over the summer, uh, except a couple of phone calls that I've made. Uh, in terms of progress reports, but uh, not much has been added to the in-kind, but I suspect, once again, once it starts moving back into the public comment section, that we will be starting to add more in-kind contribution uh, to, to the grant. Any questions about the transportation grant? Hearing none, old business. Um, one of the things that I guess I would say that I dropped the ball on uh, just because we weren't sure on how the fencing at the beach uh, was going to play out during the summer months. Um, we did not move forward with coordinating the banners for the fencing. Um, it's not to say that we can't do it. Um, I know that DOT wants to sit down with Hampton PD to talk about what the plans are going forward for next year. Uh, I know that there is a couple of um, recommendations with regard to the fencing, uh, but overall I think everybody uh, from the business owner to the pedestrian to the tourist to public safety all recognize that uh, until we have a clear distinction between sidewalks and road, that the fencing does work well. Um, I, I think there were, if the chief was here, I think he would agree that there were a couple of hiccups on uh, different businesses and deliveries that they had to make uh, in the morning, moving the fencing out a little bit and then moving it back in. But overall, I think it was a very successful uh, program and one of now which I feel confident that we can go back to the other organizations that indicated that they're, they'd be interested in um, having some banners done. So I think that will be uh, an added uh, activity, added task um, that if we want to take on in terms of once again coordinating that effort with the other organizations that have already committed uh, interest, be it the Mount Patrol, Hampton Beach Village District, Parks and Rec, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The, um, if you recall, we had a uh, kind of a informal meeting with Rockingham Planning Commission uh, in June. Uh, some of us attended that meeting. Um, it was, I think, a, just a very high-level discussion with regard to their thoughts. Uh, of the directions that we uh, uh, should be looking at going forward with the Beach Commission. I know topics like drainage uh, was discussed um, and, and drainage uh, into a, a, a much bigger picture of looking at all of the drainage issues from High Street all the way to the Hampton um, and Seabrook Bridge was one area that um, they had recommended that we, we take a look at. Um, they were also talking about the Hampton Seabrook Bridge, uh, since that is now uh, also on the 10-year transportation uh, master plan, along with Ocean Boulevard. Um, they reiterated their encouragement that in no matter what happens with Ocean Boulevard, uh, note, noting that it is important for the uh, new roadway, new sidewalks, and new drainage that um, the RPC has this real 
big emphasis on bike uh, bike paths. And so they continue to encourage us to make sure that bike paths are included in any conceptual design of Ocean Boulevard. They also mentioned that um, although that um, the Route 1 101 interchange was still on the uh, uh, the 10-year plan uh, without the intermodal uh, option, that um, they would be revisiting that and coming up with a, uh, a recommendation to keep it or not keep it in the 10-year uh, uh, plan based on the input that they had received from the town of Hampton. Um, and I suspect that those of us that will be going to the meeting in Hampton later this month with the uh, Rockingham Planning Commission and DOT uh, as they continue to go statewide in their public hearings on the 10-year plan. I'm, I'm sure that out of all three Hampton projects that will be discussed that evening, that will be one of the projects that they'll discuss. State Parks operational meeting, uh, I'm going to let Mike just talk briefly about it. I, As you know, we uh, chaired that meeting once again. I personally thought it was a great meeting. Uh, we had a full house of individuals that showed up, um, and uh, I, I think they did a great job in explaining where they were. Uh, people did come in with some comments and recommendations, but I'll let, I'll let yeah. Mike handle that. Yeah, so I think the meeting... Um, was good. We did have one of our larger turnouts uh, for the meeting. Thought it was well. Um, we did get some some input. Um, tried some different things. One of which was the uh, you know at South Beach getting two lanes in. We we did try that. We're, we experimented with a couple different ways. We're going to look at you know hopefully improving that for next year on those busy days where we need to move the traffic. So um, that was good, and that was something you know that we've heard about at that meeting. So. Um, and that was, you know, that meeting was also a transition um, as Brian Wilson, you know, our, our regional manager, you know, was, was leaving soon after um, that. So that was his last meeting. And uh, we had Meredith Collins step in on an interim basis for the summer, which she's, she's still doing um, as of now. So moving forward, we're looking at having our fall community meeting on November 6th. That's not 100% confirmed yet. I'm still yeah, I've got a, with some staff in, in Concord, but we're looking at doing it. November, it's a Monday night, November 6th, to have our community meeting um, and hope to have a new regional. We, we are having interview next week. We're interviewing for the position of our regional manager um, next Tuesday. So hopefully we'll, you know, at that November meeting, we'll, we'll have someone there in that capacity. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Dean is going to be helping. He's on the interview panel with us. Um, there are four of us that will be doing the interview, uh, myself and Dean, and then two others actually from Hampton as well. So um, we'll be doing that next week. And, you know, I should have an update for you later in October at our meeting too probably. So just to add to that, since uh, we were there present, um, just a couple of comments and, and, and also some recommendations that I'm sure that Mike and his team will be following through on. Um, I was amazed to, to hear things like 180 tons of beach, beach waste yeah. was taken off the beach. Um, you know, uh, 150 tons of sidewalk trash. Um, one of the things that um, they added um, after the March uh, snowstorm, that surprise snowstorm, um, was that they were able to get the uh, the railings that were broken yeah, right. and um, that, yeah. they were able to uh, replace all of those. Um, we're actually starting, just not to interrupt you, but they were, we're going to, he's come, their company's coming back out starting next week to continue on with some of the railing repairs. Um, and, and some of the other ones that they also agreed that um, that they would work towards because they were somewhat surprised this year and felt bad because not only 
Uh, they were shorthanded, but a number of our other organizations, including some uh, some departments within the town, uh, yeah. and that was the uh, staffing issue. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We were short for a little bit, you know. Uh, maintenance, we were able to get some things as the season went along, but well, I mean, thankfully, you know, we weren't short with our lifeguards. We were able to fill that, so you know, which is certainly an important part of the operation. So. But yeah, staffing, you know, it was, you know, almost statewide, you know, we were having those issues. So we're actually one of, we're going to be talking about some things this, you know, this off season with recruitment and doing things differently, maybe, I, you know, I don't know, we're going to put some people together and talk about that a little bit, so. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Any comments? Can we go back to uh, the banner? Fencing. So I, I was quite happy with the fencing. It's in front of my businesses, and my neighbors seem to be happy with it. But I, we had a meeting the other day, a work session, at the village district. And I was surprised that a lot of the people in the casino weren't happy with it. So have you heard anything about that? Um, I, I'm not sure why they. I, I, a lot of people were complaining about some of the retail business this year, and I think most of that had to do with weather. So, and but they were kind of blaming the fencing. So I, I, I don't know where that's coming from. I don't understand how the fencing would affect their business. But did you hear anything from anybody else, or did anybody hear anything from anyone else? I, I the comments that I got were generally pretty good. People passing through. You know, the, the pedestrians were crossing where we would expect them to cross. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. Instead of where. They all think yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah. So um, I, I think if there was some frustrations with the summer, I think it was just the business in general. Not everybody. You know, some people did very very well, but some things were off. Parking was off. Some of the gift shops were off. But uh, motels were good, and you know I know for us our, our lodging was good. So it just depends. It was a funny summer to begin with, but I think overall people liked the fence. I thought it, I thought it went over well. That's why I was yeah. kind of surprised to hear it. Um, I know that the only time I ever heard any complaints was for deliveries. And you that know what? Makes sense. The delivery trucks can figure it out. It's sometimes it inconveniences the, <laughs> the UPS driver or the FedEx driver. Well, sometimes they have to walk a little further than they should. But um, I just thought it was a great, great yeah. program. And I think the, the banners that we're trying to help with will really improve the aesthetics of it. So I just was curious if anybody else heard anything negative. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just, uh, you know, from our, you know, with trash, picking up trash on the west side a little bit, you know, it was just, you know, we just had to make a little bit of adjustment in there. But, you know, from my perspective, I thought it, from a safety point of view, I thought it was great. And also, I thought moving the traffic, I was down here at times where I travel in and out of here. And, you know, those times when it's really <clears> busy, and I thought the traffic moved a little quicker than it has in the past, I think, because people are, you know, I think walking across where they're supposed to be and where you expect them to be. And so, anyways. I, I guess the, the only thing I think of going forward is if we put some skins or covers over them, you know, I I don't want to visualize all of this extra advertising. I, I want something to be maybe uniformly nice. I, I don't know, like I mean, a wave coming down or something that's that, that enhances it, not you know, it's business. not like I mean, <laughs> like uh, at a at a baseball stadium where you see, you know, this ad, that ad, this yeah. ad. I, you know, I just if it's uniform, it, it will just enhance it more. I think. And, and, and I think well, one of the things that we wouldn't be able to do anyways is bring in any uh, private business to advertise because it's against uh, state it's rule. Okay. But even the ones that have jumped in, like the Village District, the Beach Commission, we could spread those out. And there's nothing to say that we can't just buy at one-third the cost of having an advertisement banner, but having just a blue color banner, you know, on a couple, and then have maybe the Village District, then a couple of others, motor patrol, et cetera, et cetera. So you got most of them filled in with just plain Nice something color. that looks nice or yeah, something yeah. That, that looks be beachy, I guess you might say, or something like that. We, we had discussed at the precinct that some of our banners would be 
uh, kind of safety banner, see something, say something, with the appropriate phone number to call. And this seems to me, in light of the current reality, not a bad thing to do. That's, 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 yeah, I think that's really important, especially with what's going on in today's uh, world. Uh, anybody else? Okay, moving to uh, new business. Um, the other night I decided that I was going to uh, send out something so that we can catch people off guard uh, tonight, and that is kind of a, a list of recommended priorities. Um, that all of which I think for the most part we should be familiar with. Some might uh, be relatively new, but I just started to, uh, as you all know, I rambled, so my rambling ended up writing. And um, so what I'm proposing on this 12 bullet list, which could be 13, 14, 15, depending on what other individuals would like to add to this, is that we take a look at this list between now and the end of the month when we meet next and do a, like a priority. These are the things that we really should focus in on over the next eight to nine months. This is something that if we can add to our priority list uh, and, the, and then there might be some bullets in here that people will, will say, no, I, I don't think we should be involved in that. So let me just go through quickly the 12 that I have and then open it up to anybody else that might have something else. And then uh, we can then set as an agenda item related to this month, a kind of uh, an exercise of prioritizing. So starting with uh, the first bullet, continuation in the overseeing of the transportation grant, I think that's a given uh, that we are, we are committed to do that legally. So we need to make sure that we continue to oversee the, the transportation grant to the end of it, which is in the end of August. I think one of the things that was clear from our meetings back in uh, April and May, something that uh, Mr. Griffin accepted the uh, role of project manager, was to identify all of the drainage issues throughout the beach from High to Hampton, uh, Hampton Seabrook Bridge and explore assorted options to resolve. I mean, I think that that I think has to be a, a critical component uh, uh, that the Beach Commission is involved in, participates in. Maybe not necessarily takes the lead in because now we're talking about the town, we're talking about the state, but at least have Mr. Griffin represent us in any topics, meetings, sessions that have to do with drainage. And I, and I think we have to suggest as a commission to those other organizations, be it the town, town departments, state, state agencies, that we really should take a look at not just one area, not just two areas, but comb the beach from one end to the other and say, all right, let's take a look at all of the drainage issues, whether or not it's drainage issues on some of the uh, streets uh, west of uh, Ashworth. Uh, definitely the granite issues up in Boar's Head, uh, Kings Highway, and then also we have heard recently from a group of uh, individuals that are concerned with the drainage on High Street heading into the beach. Uh, so there's a number of drainage issues that I think we need to at least be involved in. Rick, would you want to add any comment to that? <clears throat> well, there are other areas west of Ashworth Avenue that have been, that people have been coming to the town and we've worked out some agreements uh, for them to park and town parking and things like that. So there are other areas. Okay. Continue to follow the future steps of what is required to move up the uh, reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard, which once again includes the roadway, sidewalks, and drainage from Hampton Seabrook Bridge all the way up to High Street, and and move if we possibly can through uh, advocating um, and um, um, being involved in, in how do we get uh, the eight and a half million dollars. Um, and more 
uh, how do we move it up in the uh, transportation yearly plan so that we can actually get things started uh, closer to 2018 and 2019 rather than 2020, 2021. There is money out there in 2018, but it's more planning money. Um, and my my thought process is try to get uh, more money that's positioned for us to be able to actually uh, agree on what the reconstruction project should be, determine the final cost, and then have um, the town and, and DOT work together to uh, make this happen. Um, to become more active in both discussion and participation around various infrastructure projects. I think the Beach Commission should be involved and participate in any discussions um, on infrastructure projects. Uh, that is clearly states uh, within the master plan. And the one that comes to mind is uh, the uh, new sewer pop pipeline that the uh, town voted down last month, uh, last March, that to for us to advocate that that one article comes back uh, on the ballot, and that this time it, it is passed uh, to make sure we lucked out this summer without any major sewer issue. Um, consider, continue and to explore options to provide adequate reasonably priced parking both on the beach and off-site for some of visitors. Um, that has been brought up on a number of occasions about, um, I mean, you, you even talk to s certain groups and when they say that the business population, uh, the tourist population is down, um, one of the reasons is that it's expensive to bring a family into uh, to Hampton Beach. Uh, especially when there's no real understanding of where you can park, be it at the town parking areas or the village district, which is a lot cheaper than the private lots. So I, I think there are some things out there that we can explore, even to uh, a, a, a mobile application where it helps people uh, and sends people where to park. Rick? I just wanted to say that um, I'm... Uh in contact with someone that did look at doing a parking garage in two areas of Hampton um, at the beach. Um, and they were saying that today, and they're active in what's happening at the Portsmouth uh, parking garage, which I guess is many, many problems with it, uh, with however they're trying to develop it. Um, but they were saying that the, the big thing today are those apps, and they can be used in so many different ways. It can be used to uh, uh, for instance, the town and the precinct could use one to bring people to their spot, or there are even areas where people, towns are, are using them and also bringing in par private parking spaces that can be filled at very specific times if people want to use their parking at off times. Uh, there's, I mean, the world is the limit to what, what could be. And I've mentioned this to uh, the town manager, and I said I was bringing this up tonight. It sounds like it would be, it's the way of the future for parking. And we're using it quite a, quite a bit in Boston. And could, there could even be a component in it to use it for uh, employees at the beach to go to certain areas that might be underutilized, yeah. things like that. Well, to that point, um, I actually had a presentation from a, a woman who does and builds the application uh, for these apps uh, for the Seafood Festival. But it was two weeks before the festival and uh, to create it, it would have been taken a lot longer and it was not in our budget. But I did mention to her that the Beach Commission might be interested in hearing a presentation from her. Once again, maybe not to necessarily take the full responsibility of it, but to at least to put it on our agenda so other organizations can kind of get an understanding. So I told her that once we uh, identify what our priorities were this this year, that I'd be back to her uh, as, as at least a possible vendor. 
Next uh, bullet is, uh, and this is recent, but I think this is really critical also, identifying new economic development initiatives to assist business owners in the construction or reconstruction of properties that then they would be able to provide more hotel and motel rooms. I think we've heard over the last year that maybe condos, um, you know, are, are nice, it's a good tax base for the town, but we can't forget the hotel motel need also. Uh, I know that there recently was a very informal meeting um, that a lot of the business owners at the beach uh, started to talk about. Um, there are local investors uh, that are interested in some of the rundown properties, um, especially along Ashworth Ave, that would be interested in uh, reconstruction, uh, but would be looking at uh, how they would be able to finance uh, that reconstruction and wh whether or not the state would uh, have any programs that would help subsidize some of the, that uh, reconstruction um, cost. So I think that from what we have heard from different business owners is something that we should at least put on the agenda to s consider on getting involved in. Uh, next is continuing to explore the involvement with local residents, public safety, and New Hampshire DOT regarding the proposed crosswalk option across the South Beach. That has been a, uh, a topic that comes, comes in, comes out, comes in, comes out. So we need to make a decision. Do we want to become more active in that discussion? Um, continue to work with public safety and support efforts to provide short-term traffic and pedestrian safety along Ocean Boulevard. Um, we already talked about the, the banner, banners and the, uh, the fencing. Get involved and participate in discussion, pros and cons of assorted options for a new or rebuild for a new uh, bridge. Um, that's coming up sooner than later. I, uh, I believe you will hear uh, later on this month at the uh, transportation meeting that they're actually even thinking about moving that priority from 2025, 2026, closer to 2021 timeline. Uh, there's already some initial discussion taking place at DOT. Um, that bridge has become the number one red list uh, in the state of New Hampshire. So I think that they're now concerned that they need to move that up and make a decision on whether or not they're going to do a, a reconstruct of that bridge or building a brand new bridge, which will add a number of uh, variables to it if they do, a, if they propose uh, a new bridge. So that's something that I think Beach Commission needs to be involved in. Uh, review once again other areas of the master plan. Uh, I think we did a really nice job a year and a half ago, two years ago, saying that, okay, in looking at the entire master plan, let's focus around transportation. Maybe it's time for us to take a look at the master plan and, and look at other areas that we might want to focus in on um, that we haven't touched on yet. Uh, look into small but important street green space projects that would improve the look in various areas of the beach, whether or not it's a bus stop, whether or not it's adding some trees, whether or not it's just some some fixing up of areas that really don't look well right now. Um, and then finally, uh, looking at fundraising options. You know, we had a, a, a very preliminary discussion. Mike, you know, indicated that we have $9,600 in our budget. Uh, is it the uh, pleasure of the commission to look at maybe a fundraiser during this next eight or nine months to add to that uh, pool of money so that when we do get a request from Hampton PD, or uh, when we do get a request to fund a, uh, a, a small project that we can uh, help out uh, in those situations. So those are my 12. Um, does anybody else have anything uh, that, that I might have missed? Bob, anything else that you would like to add? A couple of things. Uh, I don't know that people fully understand the loss of the hotel rooms. You know, the, the condo's are actually pretty good for the town. You build a nice big building and you can 
contributes a lot of, a lot of money to the real estate taxes and really is no drain on services. Uh, but losing hotel rooms, uh, we lose the people that they go out to dinner, you know, two, three times a day, you know, to, to all of our businesses on the front. You lose the people that are here for two or three days that they, they're going to go shopping, you know, on the boulevard to get whatever little memento. So if there's a way that we can figure out how to save some of those motel rooms, um, what's happening is the loss of rooms is happening very, very fast. We're going to lose perhaps another couple hundred rooms this year that might not, you know, some of them are torn down, brownies, uh, 18 rooms were torn down this, this last week and they're going to build, you know, more one bedroom condos with kitchens. So that's, those are the people that uh, aren't necessarily going to go support the front. And there's a couple of the motels that, that might not open. So if there's a way for us to people to get together to figure that out. Um, the other comments I heard, Mike already mentioned uh, about you know, the state park. Uh, so they're they're working on, on trying to fix that bottleneck. Yeah. And then one other person grabbed me this summer on um, the south end of the beach on Ashworth Avenue about the uh, uh, the speed of the cars. You know, there's this three little 25 mile an hour signs on Ashworth Avenue. Now we all get down that road now at 30 and. 35 sometimes, but in the summertime, 25 is pretty important. And, and he asked us to try to see if DOT would put in, uh, would paint on the road 25 miles an hour. You see that in some places. You know, there's so many signs on Ashworth, you, you can't see them all. You know, telling you where to go, what to do, people crossing. So if there's a way for us to ask uh, Bill if that's something he could do or Hampton to do. It might help slow things down on that end of the beach. Ashworth would be mm -hmm. Ashworth would be the town, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the town for that. And I, th I think the minimum sp uh, uh, speed limit in the state is 30. So they can't give them tickets for going over 30 miles an hour. I believe that's how it goes. It might be different for school zones. Yeah. But they don't ticket. Thirty is the lowest. The way that's the what people, I've heard in the past, I'm not sure. The way the people step out in front, yeah. and you mm -hmm. see it, we all see it all the time. That you know, residents hit and mm -hmm. seriously injured. That's right, Dave Lavoie. You know, it's uh, yeah. had a couple of them. Polly. Paul Fields. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, it was somebody on the south end of the beach asked us to uh, to try to help them in that that way. Okay. Mike, do you have any bullets to add? Uh, you know, as Bob said, South Beach, I think, you know, our focus will still be there, getting, you know, work, trying to work that traffic in quicker at times when, when it's backed up coming into the park from the bridge. Dean, anything that you want to add as a bullet? Well, I know you put the crosswalks in, but looking at new technology, I mean, just like you're talking about an app, application um, you know a good example is, is the new crosswalks that have been put in at Phillips Exeter and uh, they're uh, they don't have to be uh, manned by a person and they're all electric eyes so when that that pedestrian hits that you know crosses that electric eye the system just goes on and, uh, so I guess I'm trying to say look into the technology of the sidewalks too not just do we need a sidewalk Crosswalk, excuse me. Chuck? So back to the, the parking off the beach. Um, I think we need some type of public transport. We need to figure out something. Um, I see the Merrimack Valley bus comes to the beach. Um, I'm not sure why they don't pick people up because maybe it's from another state. But I know that um, a lot of that money they get is federal money. So maybe that maybe because it's federal money and they're coming to Hampton, they, they could service Hampton. Uh, we have hosts that services everybody around except Hampton Beach, which is out of the coast. So I don't know why we don't have any anything happening from them. Um, and going back to something maybe simple of a, some type of I don't, what they used to call it, beach buggy or something like that. something maybe trolley or something. Is a, you know, some way I think we really need to. 
focus on coming up with something to get people around. Um, I think I think it would go well with off-site parking. Okay. Bob? All right. We've had an awful lot of people appear at the precinct this summer from particularly Hobson Street, Manchester Street, as well as other streets on the west side of Ashworth Avenue. And they are having a very serious water issue. And they wouldn't describe it as a drainage problem. They would call it a flooding problem. They had pictures of rubbish barrels floating up the streets, hydrant street quarters underwater from the flooding. Cars have been lost to the flooding. And I really see this as kind of a critical mission. I would hope we would encourage the Department of Public Works to, to start thinking about an engineering study concerning this, because these people are not saying this is the same way it was 30 years ago. The ones who lived there for 30 years are now saying it's much worse than that. And the Rockingham Planning Commission vulnerability assessment is, is something that this commission probably should take into account, as well as the state sea level rise commission's report. So toward the end now, we do what we can to protect what you have so you can add to it. Are there people saying that have you talked to that the water is coming in from the marshes? Yep. Rather than coming down from Ocean Boulevard? It doesn't come from Ocean Boulevard. No, it comes so from it's the coming in from it's the marshes. It's off from the marsh, and it goes down these streets, and it takes Ashworth Avenue out at times, so you can't drive on Ashworth Avenue. And now some people are saying it's starting to cross Ashworth Ave and to come to the beginning of the leaded streets, um, which are higher. So it's and we've had construction, some condos that were built on the back boulevard, not on the bottom of the streets. So they've raised their their land, and so the water's got to go somewhere. So it's finding new places to go. Once you start blocking things, it's got to go somewhere. So I. I, I it's a serious issue for these people down there. They have their summer homes that they can't even use, or they can't leave. So if there's a, a super moon or a, yeah. uh, what do they call king it, tide. king tide, uh, they're either stuck in their home or they can't go to their homes. So it's, it's, it's some serious stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, it's, if we need to go federal with like the Army Corps of Engineers involved or something like that to come in there dredge something or do something. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Okay. Anything else? No. Rick? No. I, okay. France? You mentioned economic development as one of your things. Uh, you know, as you recall, we rezoned a portion of the beach probably three years ago now. And we haven't really seen any results from that. Um, and actually, you particularly, John, uh, back when the casino changed hands, you know, you did a lot of work trying to figure out what was going to happen there. We we expanded that area, that potential development area, um, and I guess that's a place I, I see is, is still, you know, having great potential. Um, and depending on what goes in there, I, I think you need a, you know, it would make some sense to do a master plan, and it might speak to hotel rooms and things like that, uh, as to what that whole piece right. might look like. Um, well, one of, one of the references from talking with some of the business owners and investors that are looking to improve properties that will turn into motel hotel um, is, and they've used the example of 79E, which we all supported. Um, a couple of years ago when it had impact on Mrs. Mitchell's and also the old, old salt building both took advantage of the 79E uh, tax uh, breaks and and I don't know enough about whether or not 79E could uh, be modified within the state to add other features other than having properties be exempt from tax, uh, increased taxes for five years if they were not part of a fire or a natural disaster. Um, 
Um, but that would be one area that I think we'd have to look at from a zoning perspective also. But, you know, there, there's got to be some, I, I think we have a willingness of local investors and business owners to say, look it, we understand that we uh, want to help uh, the, the business community. Uh, we understand that in order for all of us to benefit uh, both public and private, we have to look at uh, creative ways of building and reconstructing uh, into, into hotels. Um, so how do we do it and how do we do it financially? So I, I think, you know, the zoning and, and, and the economic development has to go hand in hand. And, and you know, parking ties in with that as well. I mean, I, I, it's all kind of all yeah. the same game. Well, yeah. Okay, anything else anybody want to add? Bob? I'd like you at some point to consider whether the precinct and this commission would co-fund an economic impact study of the Rockingham Planning Commission's vulnerability assessment at the beach. For, you talking about the flooding again? Flooding and their projections going forward of the impact on the assessed values in the town over time. Okay. Anything else? All right. I will uh, add these to my list and have it sent out. And I would ask during the month of October until we meet again that you start looking at a possibly a, like it's just a one, two, and three. Uh, the one that we really should take on as a, uh, a lead role, two. Um, Number two being that if we if there's time and somebody willing to take it on uh, as a special project, and three, no, let's table it until the following year. So I, I will send that list out. Next uh, new business I already talked about the status of the new secretary appointment. Three is the uh, this is just uh, making sure that everybody is fully aware that we uh, that. New Hampshire DOT, under a public notice, has had uh, a number of public hearings throughout the state of New Hampshire to talk about the 2019-2028 10-year transportation improvement plan. Uh, there's already been a number of hearings that have taken place. Uh, one is coming, in fact, to Hampton, and it's October 16th. It's a Monday night, 7 o'clock. And it's going to be hosted by Council Russell Prescott, our executive council. And it's going to be at the Seashell Complex, uh, the Oceanfront Pavilion Room uh, at the beach. So I would uh, highly recommend uh, all of us, if not all of us, most of us, attend that meeting uh, to make sure that they understand that we still consider uh, Ocean Boulevard as a priority. Um, and then um, get additional information about the Hampton Seabrook Bridge. So that's Monday night, October 16th. I know that probably falls right with the selectmen's meeting. Um, surprised that they set it up that way, but I'm going to be there. Okay. Uh, next. I put on the agenda because I think it was important for the Beach Commission to at least have uh, a comment if, if members wanted to comment, and that is um, the recent Board of Selectmen's vote of 4 to 1, um, indicating that uh, uh, giving direction to Gerald to put together a, uh, a lawsuit against the state of New Hampshire with regard to the concerns that the town has with the state on a variety of different areas in terms of um, services and cost to those services. So I put put it on the agenda just to make sure that if any member of this commission wanted to respond either in favor of or against that we would have at least for uh, purposes of a public record of, of commissioners 
voicing an opinion one way or the other. So I put that on the, uh, the agenda, and I'm going to ask, I'll start with you, Bob, over here, if you want to comment on the, uh, the recent action taken by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. I think over time, the value of this board, you know, all working together, has been one of building relationships. All right. You can look around the table. You have Jason here from planning, so he gets to hear, you know, what we need, maybe some of our frustrations. We've got Dean, who we have an, an expert on insurance, you know. We've got Chuck, a business man. Beach District is represented. We have Fran from planning who gives us another, his expertise on, on what really works. And we have two guys from the state with, with Mike... And, and Bill Watson. And when we talk to these guys, we don't have to go to Concord. We don't have to call Concord. We don't have to write to Concord. We can say to them, this is what we need. This is what we'd like. What do you think? And they respond to us in, in, a, in a very working way. You know, the, we don't have to have the hostilities. None of us have it here. You know, so I... I don't think suing the state will be very good. I find it counterproductive. I think it'll hurt us down the road when you walk through the halls of Concord and say Hampton wants something else and, and they're the same people that are suing us for something or because of uh, psychobabble or whatever we all want to call it. All right, I, I, I just don't, I don't think it helps us in, in the long run. I, I, I really believe that. You know, I, I think we should revisit going back for a little bit of uh, the Roman meals tax, you know, I don't think that's out of line. Asking for essentially 10% or almost 10% of the 9% might have been a big reach. But, you know, if we get a portion of one of a percent, it would go to, to cleaning up a lot of that stuff. You know, to say that um, there's all that trash on the beach, you know, some of our guests put that trash there. You know, it, 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 we left it in their yard. I mean, I, I think we need to, to work together, and I think that Mike in, in Parks has done a lot, you know, to, to work things with us. And, and Bill, I mean, what do you do? You have one of the top guys of the Department of Transportation sitting with you so that you can, can talk to him. You, you can call up, up, he'll answer the phone for you. I mean, I think we're very lucky on this board to have that, so I, I, I don't think we should be suing the state. I am one of those people who thinks we should all get together. And if we're going to disagree, fine. We can disagree, but we shouldn't be fighting. So, I hope there's another way for us to, to figure that out. Mike, would you no. like to add any comment? No. Okay. Dean. Well, I think it comes down to communications. The, the the things that we've done as a partnership you know, we, with the town, this board, or, I mean, I can think of some, some things that have, have come out of a, an easy thing with just talking back and forth. And when we ran into a, uh, a snowplow problem, I mean, with, with too much snow, it, it was just heads putting together and, and making, coming up with a solution. Um, you know, we had some conversations which went back and forth and so forth on the sidewalk. That we were talking and continuing, and I and I just don't want those things to stop. I just um, uh, suing anybody is not a good good idea, no matter who you are. I guess that's the way I look at it. And uh, um, I just think that we've we've got we've come so far in in talking things out. I mean, I know this board, you know, we we're, we're we're the part that maybe pushes the needle a little more type of a thing because we're business people and, and involved in the community like everybody else, but um, it's sometimes a, a bigger roadblock just might stymie everything, and I guess that's my biggest concern. Jeff? Uh, I was at the selectmen's meeting and I made my comments. I, I, I think that we win this little battle we're going to lose a war. And I think now we have a, a governor who's very receptive to our business, which we call Hampton Beach. Um, and I 
really think that we could work together. Now, not knowing as much about this 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 um, litigation, is it the town against Dread? Is it the town against DOT? Is it the town against the legislature? Are we going to have ten lawsuits out there? Because all it's going to do is continue to, to, to bring up our budget that um, uh, that I think it's over budget right now for um, what we're spending on uh, legal. And I, I just don't think we're going to get anywhere. And right now, everybody seems to be getting along. I know the village district right now gets is, has never had it so good with with, with you guys in dread, with, with DOT, we need anything. I need it with, with the town of Hampton, Public Works, I need a sign moved. I call up and everybody seems to be working together. So I'll, I think we're just going to light a fire and, and we're not going to be able to put it out. So that's just my, 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 my two cents, I guess. Well, uh, I compare litigation to surgery. You only do it if all else fails. And in this case, I think ultimately, if the town wins, it loses, and if the town loses, it loses. The state and the town are like a couple, and the town's trying to, in some ways, divorce itself from the state because it's angry at certain things it feels the state is doing that are economically detrimental to the town. The reality is that we're going to have to continue to live in the same house. They're going to have to continue to sleep in the same bed. So there's no ultimate greater good that would be served, and I would hope that the town would entertain some alternatives to litigation, uh, conciliation, mediation, arbitration, or again try to sit down and weigh the cost-benefit analysis of all this. Going forward, I mentioned the Rockingham Planning Commission's vulnerability assessment. This town is going to need the state in a very big and cooperative sort of way. And as far as Chuck's comments about uh, getting along with the state, we ran a new activity this on uh, September 16th, with, which was extremely well attended. It was something that kind of came out of the ground mid-season. It was not put in the original permitting, and Phil Bryce walked this through almost overnight and basically said to his people, do everything you can to allow this to happen. Uh, that's the level of cooperation um, that we have. And, uh, that's how I see the state. And if the town divorces the state, I would like the town to consider all the non-present possible outcomes, which aren't just the suit. It's when you need something else. There's going to be a hostile environment. No litigation ends well. And the residuals will be long after the suit's over. There'll still be animus to be played out and to be played out in a way you won't be able to prove it, that it will exist. Human nature has never been kind and forgiving in its soul. That's all I have to say. Rick. Um, I'm not so sure it is necessarily a litigation. The town is looking for clarification of the agreement that they have in 1933 or whatever it is. And we have to protect all of the people that live in Hampton, not just people at the beach. And there are many people that live at the beach are getting no respect from either the town or the state. And uh, so there's a, and there's many, so many other uh, questions that get brought up constantly. You can pick them out right from going over uh, issues that happen at the planning board. Uh, uh, you know, people that have problems all along Ocean Boulevard, um, and you know, it's it is a conversation. I think that the town is looking to have or a mediation, not necessarily a lawsuit, as I understand it. But the, it, you know, it's. The town, uh, the Board of Selectmen has to plan for everybody, not just the people at the beach. And there are people that aren't happy with the way it is. 
and the amounts of things that Hampton pays for today. Fred. I think in the last 10 years or so, the, uh, the relationships between the town and the state has come miles. Um, it is it, as good as it's ever been, and it, it continues that way with the DOT, with DREAD. Um, you know, I think what Chuck said about having a governor in place right now that I think is, is amenable and in tune to what's going on at the beach is, is a, a good starting point. Um, and I, I think any, any gains that might be gotten are going to be far outweighed by the, the ultimate losses that the town will occur if it ever wins. I, I doubt very much that it's going to win. I don't know quite what that means, and I just don't see it happening. So I think it's a, a foolish idea at this point. Okay, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> um, first, first of all, I, I, I think as we have all watched the Board of Selectmen's meetings, over the last couple of uh, weeks, um, and then re read the stories in the uh, in the Hampton Union and 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 the editorial. <coughs> uh, Rick, I guess I have to differ with you when you say you're just looking. The board of selectmen is just looking for clarification on the 1933. That clarification could come in a variety of different ways outside of a courtroom and in a legal lawsuit. And if if you go back to the discussions by the Board of Selectmen, some of the Board of Selectmen, it is very clear that the interpretation that has been given to Gerald was to start litigation into a lawsuit against the state of New Hampshire. That's my read of what has taken place at the Board of Selectmen's. They had the opportunity recently when you had what I would consider some icons of this town who, although no longer serve in a public office, clearly cares about this town and has, as a group, where they differed in a variety of different political areas, come, come to the Board of Selectmen as a organization, as a group. And I'm talking about Senator Stiles. I'm talking about Representative Rice, uh, Representative uh, Mike O'Neill, uh, Representative Sheila Franco, um, all asking the board let us let us participate let us try to coordinate further discussions with the state so that we don't go into a lawsuit scenario and if you all saw the board of selectmen's meeting last monday uh, it was rejected that that concept was rejected and to me that basically says that it, it is now the decision of the Board of Selectmen to actually sue the state of New Hampshire. Another thing that I that I'm that I feel that that's that's difficult. We all worked hard. We all, in a unanimous vote, including Rick and myself, representing the town of Hampton, worked very hard to get a three to two vote. Um, last year with regard to the sidewalks and realizing that the town in fact agreed by a three to two vote to accept the role and responsibility of maintaining the sidewalks if we got new sidewalks. So my, my thought process to that is that, okay, well, for that to happen, our number one priority is to have Ocean Boulevard reconstructed quicker and faster than expected. And that should be a priority of trying to coordinate with the state. How do we how do we make that happen? I fear that this lawsuit could really jeopardize 
our eight and a half million dollars that we have there now and that the governor is still continuing to say yes that is a top priority i can't see how a governor or an executive council which would have to approve this can continue to look favorable on hampton hampton beach if they're in the middle of a lawsuit with hampton so saying that which kind of leads to the next agenda item so i'm going to bridge the next agenda item uh, to my comments is that um, at five o'clock tonight i dropped off at the uh, town manager's office uh, a letter addressed to uh, chairman waddell and uh, the board of selectmen um, and i'm just going to it's 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 brief but i'm going to read it um, dear chairman waddell as you know i've served the town of hampton on the Hampton Beach Area Commission for the last 10 years, nine of those years as a commission chairman. Although my present appointment ends in October of 2018, I've decided to resign from the commission, effective after the commission meeting on November 16th, 2017. I've made this difficult decision based primarily on the differences of beliefs between myself and the majority of the Board of Selectmen regarding the ongoing relations with the state of New Hampshire. As you know, I've been appointed by the Board of Selectmen, but I cannot follow the direction the Board of Selectmen is taking at this point. I believe that our goal should continue to try to work with our, uh, our differences out in all identified areas, whether or not it's sidewalks, whether or not it's drainage, whether or not it's public safety on the beaches. I think it's more important for us to continue to push for things that we feel that are important in the, in the town of Hampton. So I feel that continuing to push forward for state and federal funding for our critical projects, including reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard, and not to pursue a costly, lengthy legal suit against the state it could also jeopardize, in my opinion, favorable future funding commitments by the state. That is the reason why I feel that I need to resign. I can no longer represent the Board of Selectmen of the town under the cir these circumstances. During the next month and a half, I plan to transition my duties over to other members, including administrative responsibilities of our, of our existing transportation grant that is scheduled to continue until August 2018. Also, when the annual elections occur in November, which will be the chairman, vice chairman, and treasurer secretary, um, I would be happy to meet with the newly elected chairman to assure the commission of a smooth transition. And finally, I appreciate the opportunity to serve the town for the last 10 years and hope that the role that I and other commissioners have played have in fact made a difference in implementing many aspects of the Hampton Beach Master Plan. And I have copies uh, for the commissioners and uh, copies have already been given to the Board of Selectmen and I have a copy sent to Governor Chris Sununu. So saying that, uh, I wanna make sure that everybody is aware that uh, in coming up next meeting, there are three additional vacancies that will occur. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the Commissioner at Lodge, and the Hampton Beach Village District. So if any of the three that are presently on the commission want to continue, it will be important uh, to receive some type of notification at least from the chamber and from the village district, uh, that if you are looking to be reappointed or if that organization has to appoint somebody uh, somebody else. Um, the commission, as you know, has the ability to appoint the commissioner at large. So that vote will take place at the end of this month. And uh, so discussion will have to take place with Mr. Merrill 
to see if he will continue or if we will need to go out and look for a new commissioner at large. And then, as I said, in November, uh, we will have to go through the process of electing um, the chair, the vice chair, and uh, secretary treasurer. Any comments? What? I got to tell you that I'm, I'm really disappointed to hear this tonight. You know, you leaving the board, you, you're the, you, John, were like the linchpin to help communicate to all the different people. But I respect your opinion to do it, so we'll leave it at that. I talked earlier about the reputation this board has and relationships, so I'm not going to repeat that. But I'll go back 10 years ago, whenever it was, and it was you and Nancy Stiles and dozens and dozens of other people that had meetings to put in that seashell. And frankly, a lot of us said, it'll never happen. What are we thinking? But you guys didn't quit. You just kept going back and nudging it along. And somehow, Senator Stiles and, and, and Bev Hollingworth, who was out at the time, you know, but, but she worked, she pushed. Even though she wasn't in office, she still maintained her her obligation to the people of Hampton. So I look at that building that's out there now and all those new improvements, and I hear it all the time from the people about how beautiful it is. To say that we don't get anything out of it, I really disagree, because I look at those condos that I mentioned earlier that are paying all the new real estate taxes. I look at the continued investment into Hampton you know, that increases the town's tax base without really bringing a lot of expenses to, to, to the town. You know, we really are on a roll, and I think, you know, that, that is worth something. Um, so, I mean, a lot of other people might not fully understand the things that you've done on this board, but, but we know, and we know what you've done for Experience Hampton and all that uh, happens, it started with a Christmas parade and now it's crosswalks and uh, walkways and recently the experience Hampton, your board gave $30,000 to the town. You, know, you should be congratulated for that. Unfortunately, things do change and I think, you know, sometimes we have to look forward. So, you know, we'll accept the change. But I really, really don't want to... Uh, make this board less relevant. So what I'm going to propose to you, Rick, is that you go back to your board when it comes time to, to say, what are we going to do? Who, can we, who are we going to appoint to replace John Nyan? Who, who, I don't know who you can get that would be better, but I have somebody in mind that would do just as well because she does relationships. I talked with Nancy Stiles today. I said, Nancy, if the board of selectmen asked you to serve, would you do it? And she said that she would. So if you go back to your board and you talk to your other members and say, you know what, you can go on with your agenda, but I really don't think you should try to blow up our agenda. So I, I think, you know, as a, as a good selectman, as a leader, uh, I voted for you. I voted for that whole board. I'm looking to see if we can find enough people that say, Nancy can take that, that seat, and, and, and then we'll, we'll see what, who we elect after that. So I appreciate you listening. Thank you. Any other comments? I just want to thank you for everything you've done. Um, I think we worked well as a team. I think we all learned a lot from each other. And you'll be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hearing, uh, well, I would second that. Uh, I'm the new kid on the block except for age. And, and <laughs> I have uh, probably learned more from you politically than from almost anybody else in the community. I think you're a great asset to the community. And when I mentioned earlier, this litigation could have unexpected and unintended consequences. This is one of them. And I'm sorry it's happened. 
I just want to thank you for all your effort over, over the years, John. You, you've been the heart and soul of this board, but as Bob mentioned, a lot of other boards in town and activities in town. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you also. Thank yeah. you. John, thank you too. And I and I think that, you know, I still had my third year on it, and you brought a lot of things forward that we hadn't talked about in years. I mean, I mean, we were sitting here talking, uh, you started talking about a transportation grant that, you know, what did we start, Six, $16 million? Yeah. Something like that. And we kind of looked at it and said, he said, no, it's, it's doable. We just have to get to the right people. And... Uh, you know, to, to grab, you know, eight or nine million is, is huge, you know, because we know how small that, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's, it's there's only so many places that it goes in the state, and uh, for us to, to pull that is, 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 you know, a lot of your work and a lot of your, you know, for the area around this time. So, um, thanks for, for working these years, and, uh, and uh, we're going to miss you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I sent John a text letting him know how I felt, but, you know, just want to thank you for everything and for helping. You know, a lot of people talk about relationships, and, you know, I think you, you know, really helped build that and develop the foundation, the relationship with the town, this commission, and the state. So, you know, we miss, miss that. So, thank you. And on behalf of the planning office, I want to thank you as well, John, for all your hard work and everything on this side. Thank you. Okay, let's go back and watch the uh, Patriots and the, uh, the Bruins. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. McMahon. Second. Second by Mr. Griffin. All in favor. Don't forget, uh, our next meeting, October 22nd, I believe it's Thursday. 26th. 26th, I'm sorry. October 26th. Um, and the location will be determined. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. October 26th. Uh